Right now, uh, right now, I'm I'm pumped. I'm psyched. Uh, I I just got finished doing my little pre-show ritual, and so now I'm feeling really good. It's just all about getting out there and doing what we do. I definitely think it's going to be an excellent show. It's like an itch that you just can't scratch. You, you can't ever get. Some people say I could be famous, but I don't want to be famous necessarily. Entertaining, uh, playing shows is absolutely incredible. That, that sample music just like. As a musician, I'm pretty much the all-around guitar person. I play, uh, I play guitar, I play bass, drums. Um, I play guitar and sing in my band, Dr. Phil Good and the Let's Get It Ons. We've been together for about two years now, going on two years. Um, my role is pretty much the uh, singer-songwriter thing, you know. I've been doing it since I was about eight or nine. Really got into music at an early age, and uh, it's pretty much been a very long road ever since. I've always thought of music as more of an outlet. You know, people have these emotions that they keep bottled up inside themselves, and they have no way or form to express it. And um, music has always been that thing to me. So, if if it if it does get bigger, then it gets bigger, and that just means that more people are enjoying it, and that's my purpose with it. Uh, I go by Young Casey. I was actually given that name when I uh, lived out in California for a while. So, originally from Kansas City, out in California, they just called me Casey. Uh, started music really freshman year of high school. Um, didn't really get serious about it until I was about 16. Been doing it really for about eight years or so. I got my bass when I was 14. I got it for Christmas. Then I got my guitar, which I still have, still play, when I was about 16, I think. I didn't start actually, no, I got it when I was 15. Didn't start playing it until I was about 16 and a half. I find that it's not only something that comes naturally, it's something that I really get a lot of happiness from. I mean, there's nothing in the world like getting up on a stage and you start playing and people are just screaming, freaking out, getting drunk, having a great time, and that's what it's about. I started piano lessons whenever I was about five, and I took those for five years and then drum lessons for about two and a half years. And ever since, I've just been into it. And lately, I've been getting into a lot of electronica music for the past couple years. I would say it could be a variety from noise to 8-bit to thrash, I like to believe. But <laughs> I would say that. The very first thing I remember wanting to be as a kid was a brain surgeon. Could you imagine that? <laughs> I actually wanted to be a, uh, an underwater videographer. I wanted to document uh, underwater sea creatures. And well, I wanted to be a number of things from, I guess, just astronaut to pianist to dentist and I've always wanted to be a dentist. Never really wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that um, but I've always been entertaining to people not necessarily an entertainer. Uh, always able to make people laugh stand in front of a crowd and, and, and be comfortable with it. I remember my dad was always outside working on cars and he'd always be blasting whatever. Uh, the first real song I remember would be uh, Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. That, that was probably the first thing that got me into music was hearing that song. I still love that song. I've tried so many different things. I've tried working in restaurants, management, you know, that's where everybody starts basically. Um, oh, I was a welder for a while, that was fun. Um, I still like welding. I like working on cars. Um, I like building computers. That's something that I've recently been thinking about maybe trying to go to school for, but I don't think any of these things would make me near as happy as performing professionally. My mother actually was an artist. My grandparents adopted me. And so uh, 
I think they just want a dependable career, like no matter what. And in that mind, they're pushing me to be a dentist and I want to be a dentist. I've been wanting it to become one ever since Extreme Makeover. <laughs> the plastic surgery edition. <laughs> College definitely makes it harder to focus on music and especially considering I'm a biology major. And so I try to find time <laughs> as much as I can. I have a lot of homework. I work about three or four hours a day on homework. My friends try to like keep me going and they support it. I did a lot of moving. I did a lot of moving at a very young age. I've been you know, here, North Carolina, Oklahoma, California, Florida, Alabama. I've, I've been pretty much all over the United States. This place is my hobby. <laughs> For as long as I've worked here, it's, it, it's, not, it's no longer a job. It's more of just another place that I can go and hang out, be with friends, and get paid for it. Kitty Crocs. <laughs> oh, there you go. Modern version. <laughs> I used to write songs consistently about drug use. Like, oh, on, wrote it on drugs, recorded it on drugs, and performed it on drugs. I mean, it was stupid. She's an inspiration for why I stopped doing a lot of the stuff that I wrote about. Progress is slow, progress is hard, it's a challenge and it's a full-time job at least for me anyways but you know everybody's got so much going on that it's kind of hard to bring everybody together even for the two days a week that we do practice it's, it's a struggle it really is but it's, it's getting better rent comes every month and that's you know what well for me whatever i make on a show goes straight to my rent i try to stay in the black but here lately, I've been in the red because we haven't been doing any shows. For about a year, I actually didn't let out, like, release any of my music because I was too shy. But um, I just released it, and uh, I think my most popular song, Lady in the Fountain, um, got a lot of response, positive feedback to it. And there's some people here that um, support me with that. When I'm making my electronica um, genre of music, I would say it takes me about a week to start off like the blueprints of it and then uh, go through like my mastering and editing and I would say I'd be competent with a song within about a month of each song. Things have been going really well. Um, we've been spending a lot of time rehearsing and practicing, you know, getting ready for new shows. Just uh, really, really pushing ourselves to to be as creative as possible. And it seems to be working out pretty well. I think in the past uh, in the past year and a couple months that we've been together, uh, we've played at least at least 45 to 50 shows. I mean, I've got real serious about it now. It was more a hobby. That's what it is. I mean, a hobby is what you do for fun. It takes up a lot of your time and you spend money on it. That's what a hobby is. Hobby doesn't make you money. So you can't do a hobby and, and make money from it. You gotta treat it like a business. There are so many different obstacles to overcome. Uh, stage fright is definitely a key one. We, I, even through all the music and playing in different bands and you know performing, I still I still get stage fright and it's something that I've I've battled with a lot. Um, I also went through a lot of a lot of hard times in my life to get to even the point I'm at now, um, bankruptcy, losing my job over and over again, moving from place to place, and I finally just sat myself down and really put my priorities in order. You know, Cat Williams says you got to have haters, and you're always going to. You have to. If you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. Yeah, I've, I've encountered a few times where people are just jerks. You know, I've had bad experiences with band members. I've had bad experiences with people publicly, audience-wise. You know, people come up sometimes, they get too messed up, and they, you know, sometimes they can, they can get uncomfortably close, giving you hugs and stuff, or sometimes they're just, they've got a bone to pick with you for whatever you might have done or didn't do on stage, and 
best thing to do is just smile and wave and just say, hey, I hope you're having a good time. Or if not, I'm sorry you didn't have a good time, and maybe next time will be better. Uh, yeah, I'm still white. Um, that's, I mean, pe from people not wanting to work with me simply because I'm a white rapper. Um, people not wanting to put me on shows simply because I'm a white rapper. Um, I mean, based just on that alone, uh, other than that, I mean, being in a small town such as uh, Wichita Falls, uh, it's very clicky here as well. There'd be these local kids that used to just kind of like make fun of me. And um, I know my live performance isn't like the best at times, but uh, it's just kind of funny. Because, <laughs> I mean, I can kind of agree with them to a certain point, but it just doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> We do that pep talk thing way before, way before we even play a show. Like, usually, usually weeks before we sit down and we talk about you know the set list and the energy that we have to bring out and everything like that. So really, it's just all about the five minutes before we get on stage. We're like, okay, this is it. Now it's time to apply everything we've done. <laughs> I'm completely sweaty and completely drained, but it was all worth it. It was a really good show and a really good turnout. I had a lot of my friends, my, my family, my mom, who never hardly gets to come to any of our shows came out. So automatically that just hypes me up even more. So I know we played a good show. I, I know she supports, supports me and she loves me. So to have her here really means a lot. I'm hoping it goes great. I mean, that's, that's really your hope anytime you play a show. You, you want it to go great. Doesn't always go great, but the show's gotta go on. You just keep pushing. We put this much work into it, it would be really pointless to just throw it away. You, even if this is a horrible show, I mean, e even if the whole building burns down, I mean, as long as we're still breathing, we're gonna keep playing. <laughs> I have a, I have an age limit on when I'm actually going to stop, if, if nothing comes of it. Uh, but my goal, I mean, I'm not in it to be a millionaire or, or be huge. I just want to be able to uh, make a living on doing nothing but making music. Um, whether that's here in town, I mean, somebody can make a living comfortably off $30,000 $30, a year here in town. I mean, if I can make $30,000 a year making music, I I'll be fine doing that. If it, if it were to end tomorrow, I could honestly say I would probably be more focused on going back to school and uh, just trying to find a, a different way to, uh, to bring my, my joy of music to other people. I would like to believe that uh, we would still all really be good friends, you know, for whatever reason it, it would be that uh, I, I probably Honestly, I probably still wouldn't lose my passion for music at all or entertaining. That's basically my life right now. <laughs> I mean, uh, I try to like just fit it in, and um, sometimes I'll just take out, take it out of my social time because I just I can't really function without making some sort of music or some chaos. It, it can be severely disappointing, severely, but there's no reason to throw it in. I mean, it's a challenge. You got to face that head on regardless of the situation. There's nothing like the rush getting on stage. There's, there's nothing like it.